Good morning, everyone. Thank you for making it this morning. Please take your seats. Good morning, Your Excellencies, government officials, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Fadis Beiti, and I'm the general manager of AeroFarms AGX, based in Abu Dhabi. And I would like to welcome you to our second annual Innovation Actec Summit in Abu Dhabi. This is an event that we're delighted to host, and this is our second year, but the first year in person. And uh, we're so proud of getting more than 1,000 registrants for this event. Some of them will be streaming online, and there's about 250 people to attend in person. We want this platform, working with our partners at ADIO, to become an annual uh, platform for exchanging knowledge and uh, identifying new trends in ACTEC and localizing those. During the first half of this summit, we're going to be focused on subjects that are very relevant to business leaders and policy makers. The first panel will be focused on food security, food sufficiency, and sustainability on the road to COP28. And the second panel will be focused on public-private partnerships and the role of government in reaching a critical mass in the ag tech industry. Before we dive deeper into those interesting subjects, allow me to welcome our CEO and co-founder of AeroFarms, Mr. David Rosenberg. Good morning. Bernard Shaw said that a reasonable man adopts himself to the world. An unreasonable man adopts the world to himself. I'd like to think we're a lot of unreasonable people here trying to change the world. And here, if you think of what the world's, what the state of the world is, right now there are a lot of tensions and a lot of us are very aware of this, but going fast, we have massive droughts in parts of the world. We have massive floods in parts of the world. We have extreme heat, we have extreme cold. And from a feeding the world, from a food production standpoint, that nets out with a lot of challenges. And we need to think of how we adopt our environment rapidly. We need urgent change. And there's some tremendous technological advancements that could really accelerate this change. If you think about computing power and how fast computing power has accelerated and will accelerate. And part of that computing power is a microchip. When I co-founded the company, it was on the appreciation that a microchip is becoming more efficient. And what that leads to is a light emitting diode. An LED is essentially a lot of microchips. And those microchips, as they become more efficient, that makes the power consumption much lower and it extends the attenuation. Attenuation is the LED speak for depreciation, the service life go up. And it could open up a whole new industry. For us, that industry was vertical farming. Other technology enablers like robotics, automation, synthetic biology, genetics, these are all enablers that can bring tremendous transformational energy to industries like agriculture. I'm a kid from the Bronx. There wasn't much farming in the Bronx. When I wanted to see a farm, maybe I went to the Bronx Botanical Gardens. And that's illustrative of, it doesn't come in all one shape and size. People from very different backgrounds need to come together to solve these macro challenges. In agriculture, just take a look at the people around you. We have 250 people in person. We have over 1,000 people online. 
these are people not just from agriculture, but from different ecosystems coming together to solve problems collectively. Tom Freston, the founder of MTV, said innovation is often taking different proven systems, technologies, and bringing them together. In his case, it was music and television. In our case, it could be computing power, robotics, automation, synthetic biology. It could be a lot of things coming together. And that's the purpose of this innovation summit. It's bringing people from very different parts of the world, very different industries together to solve problems. And I'll give an example. When we were founding Aero Farms, my partner, one of my co-founders, came from the Cornell School of Agriculture, wonderful school of agriculture. We started building farms, and it didn't always work. We didn't understand why it worked, why it didn't work. We hired a kid right at MIT, another kid right at Harvard, and we said, just grow plants, track data. I don't know what you're looking for, but just track data and maybe the solutions will present itself. And that's what they did. That was the birth for Aero Farms of data analytics at Aero Farms. And ultimately we started seeing the patterns. But neither of them were from ag. One had a degree in biology and data analytics, but it's just about looking at the numbers and seeing things. At Aero Farms, the data analytics sits in both our R&D team and our IT team. So one, you have this foundation of biology when you look for things, and the other side, you're not anchored in any one solution, and you have an open mind to accepting information and trying to see the patterns. Here, and in similar ways, these partnerships, and I'm emphasizing the partnerships because it's really, the innovation comes in different ways, come together. I, I had breakfast this morning with a friend from Nokia Bell Labs, Paul, and here, one of our speakers later today, we, when we set out to solve imaging, we knew it was important to image every plant every day. We also quickly, at Aero Farms, we like to say, what are we gonna do and what aren't we gonna do? What are we uniquely excellent at? And let's just focus on that. Other ancillary things, as much as possible, let's partner to get there faster. So for us, we're, we feel we, we're uniquely good at the growing. So if you look at growing, we focus on growing plants. Growing, and for us, it's not just a plant, it's a distinctive plant, it's a great plant. But how do we partner in other areas? So on, from an imaging standpoint, it was, okay, Nokia Bell Labs, the, you know, tremendous innovation going on. If you think of Bell Labs and the transistor and the history there, they're also come in and figured out not only the lens and the imaging side, but how to move it around. We were having a tough time imaging a plant. We tried lots of solutions of imaging it and quickly realized it's beyond our capabilities. So you'll hear from Paul later of what they brought with drones. And not to take any thunder away from you, but as an example, just the, there's a lot of weight in a stabilizer of a drone to keep it going flat. So we didn't want to put the weight of that stabilizer in the drone and how they got around the flight patterns to reduce the weight of the stabilizer in the drone so that you could have extended battery life and imaging the plants. And often the problems we need to solve are not the obvious ones to make solutions work. But whether it's automation and seeding, and here there's seeding that's relevant in agriculture, or there are other industries that solved putting a small piece of something on a big piece of something. So we found solutions, an example, like the baking industry, where they put small something on big something. And the points are, this, again, the solutions come in different ways. It's other innovation in delivering water, in delivering nutrients, micronutrients. We needed a solution. We realized we farm differently. A lot of farmers, you put in fertilizer and then you rewater again and again. Here at Aero Farms, as an example, we have sensor loops that understand what nutrients and micronutrients the roots absorb. And then we wanted a system that could redistribute different nutrients and micronutrients at different intervals. Instead of 30 days, what if we could do it in 15 minutes and do that again and again? How do we understand whether it's nitrogen, zinc, iron, magnesium, what's being absorbed and what 
a plant wants to have replenished, and what are the outcomes, cause and effect? So how do we have those robust systems, and who can we work with to develop those robust systems? What are the sensors? We went from saying big data to smart data, meaning it costs money to capture all that data, and it costs money to store all that data, so what's the right amount of data? How frequently do we need a sensor, and how do we capture that? And we invested in our MES, our user interface, that really tracks plants across its travel in the farm. How do we tie that to our SCADA system? How do we tie that to our PLC, our program logic controls? And how do we ultimately tie that back to our ERP system? The industrial controls that control the farm, as well as take the information from the farm, divide it into its use groups, and set it on its path, whether it's quality assurance, sales, marketing, finance, R&D, and then how do you interpret? What are the systems to interpret? And here, like we have, again, not obvious partnerships within the ag space. We partner with Google, with Microsoft, with some big ag techs, with Dell, some big technology companies, as well as we partner with agriculture companies. We're partnering with Cargill. Some of you have visited our AgEx facility we partnered with Cargill to solve cocoa. And here, cocoa, the yields were going down year over year, mostly grown on the Ivory Coast. So their population is growing. People like chocolate. How do we de-risk chocolate and get those yields back up? And a lot of that work is done on the platform that we've developed with a lot of you. So when we say platform, we appreciate it comes in different pillars. So. There's a, it starts with the biological side. When we say biological side, meaning what the plant wants. Temperature, humidity, pH, nutrients, micronutrients, not just light, but spectrum, intensity, frequency. And then the other components that once you know what the plant wants to be the best it could be, what can we do to deliver that? There's a mechanical side, frames, lights, pumps, fans, etc. There's the environmental side, the built environment. What's the building spec? to which delivers the environmental specification. Here, we like to say we could grow a plant in the, on the equator or on the North Pole, but the building specification changes depending what the ambient temperature is. So what's the R value of the walls? What's the HVAC specification to deliver it? Then there are trade-offs depending what the energy rates are, whether you want a more efficient and you pay up for the more efficient condensers and units versus the less efficient systems, et cetera, et cetera, through the building spec, and then it's the operating, the SOPs. We operate more like lean manufacturing than traditional farming. So how do we bring in that expertise that understands lean manufacturing workflow in a facility? And then it's also genetics. Genetics are half the equation. And here, too, at Aero Farms, we realize we are not going to be a genetics company. That's just a body of knowledge that's beyond our capabilities, and there are a lot of other people that are excellent at that. So how do we partner with those other people? And when I say partner, how do we help them? How can we use our platform to accelerate their innovation cycles? And here, for you, you have a new variety. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't work well. And sometimes it doesn't work well, not because of the variety, but when you test it, the testing didn't work. So it was too hot, it was too cold, it was red or too dry, and it interfered with that scientific experiment. And part of what we're really good at is isolate a variable, test an assumption. So how do we partner with those genetics companies to accelerate their innovation cycles and understand what works well, what doesn't? And then it's the digitization. What I described earlier, controlling a farm and getting information. And here, what the point I'm trying to make is one, we entered a really tough industry. I don't think anyone joins farming and says, oh, this is going to be a breeze. It's tough. And it takes an ecosystem. To do it right takes partnerships, takes collaboration. One of the areas we decided to collaborate on was food safety. And while vertical farming is going to be a massive industry because of those technology enablers and unfortunately because of these environmental challenges, there's, so there's going to be more f vertical farming companies, but there's an underappreciation of the sanitation needs and the needs to de-risk food safety. 
If you think of leafy greens, and we sell a lot of leafy greens in the U.S. and, and now other crops as well that we're getting into, but leafy greens have the highest rates of food contamination. 11% of all food contamination is leafy greens. Salmonella, E. coli, listeria. You have to do it right. You have to design for san in a sanitized way, and you have to have your processes to make sure that people are safe. And if you don't, people are gonna get hurt, people are gonna die. So we really, there's a, a responsibility that's above and beyond when you're producing food for people. And we realize that a lot of people well-intentioned are designing systems with too much risk in their systems. So this is an area where we could show leadership and we co-founded the Food Safety Coalition and how do we share some of those best practices with the ecosystem. And here again, there's a lot, it's a whole new industry and there's a lot we need to do together to improve the, the greater agriculture industry. And from a platform approach, there's more and more potential, more and more opportunities. So we thank you all for joining us today. We look forward to meeting you, to collaborating, and the wonderful opportunities ahead of us. We're optimists, and together we could really make a better world. Thank you so much. speaker this morning, Engineer Abdullah Shamsi, the Director General of ADIO Abu Dhabi Investment Office. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, friends and colleagues. Um, I always worry when I come up here and there's someone that's taller than me that stands at the podium. It just shows you how short I really am. So thank you, first of all, for joining this morning. Thank you for this conversation, uh, the opportunity to be able to discuss with you something that is very near and dear to me personally, but also very much a learning opportunity for me as I think about what it is that we can do within the farming space. So as mentioned by Fadi, my name is Abdullah Shamsi. I oversee the Abu Dhabi Investment Office. What is the Abu Dhabi Investment Office? So we are the single entity within the government of Abu Dhabi that is responsible for investment in Abu Dhabi. And we provide opportunities, solutions for investors, for companies to be able to grow with Abu Dhabi into the future. Now, AgTech and the space specifically is very much a priority sector for what Abu Dhabi is looking to be able to change in terms of mindset, looking to be able to innovate in terms of solutions, and looking to be able to partner, more importantly, with what it, we believe needs to be a pillar, not just for us from a food security perspective, but for the globe altogether. So if I can jump straight in, David mentioned partnership as a key pillar. He talked about bringing technologies together and different technologies of our time. If I may add to that, I would say as important, and I think very much in line with enabling the first two, is bringing people together. And my understanding, and I wanna congratulate the AeroFarms team, my understanding is that this is the largest AgTech conference in the world, with over 300 people registered here and over 1,000 people watching us somewhere in the cloud. So let's please give them a round of applause for establishing this. So everyone attending this summit is united by an in interest in solving global food challenges using technology and innovation. What is so exciting is that we are making it happen here in Abu Dhabi. So today, I want to tell you the story of how and why Abu Dhabi prioritized the development of a thriving ag tech sector as a key part of an advanced, diversified economy. Our ag tech story begins with the late Sheikh Zayed. 
his vision to transform the desert into a green land. The people of Abu Dhabi and the UAE take great pride in turning this idea into reality. And agriculture flourished across the Emirates with fruits and vegetables being grown from Abu Dhabi to Ras Al Khaimah. Technology has always been at the heart of the story as farmers used modern irrigation and innovative solutions to overcome the obstacles of water scarcity and extreme temperatures. Abu Dhabi recognized an enormous opportunity for the region's Actec ecosystem to pioneer innovative solutions that enable us to grow more with less. Actec aligns with Abu Dhabi's commitment to advance technological solutions that further economic progress for the region and beyond. It is a great example of an area in which Abu Dhabi has a competitive advantage and can help drive innovation for global impact. For Adio, AgTech is one of our high growth priority sectors, and we work with an incredible array of companies to explore the whole range of AgTech innovation, from indoor vertical farming to water efficiency, from genetic sequencing to growing the right type of crop for the environment. Many of these innovations are linked, whereby advancing one will also advance the other. The importance of AgTech innovation was brought sharply into focus during the pandemic. COVID-19 showed the vulnerability of global supply chains and food systems and exasperated malnutrition in many developing countries. Food security is particularly complex for regions with dry and arid climates and where arable land and water are scarce. The goal is for solutions developed in Abu Dhabi to be exportable. Once companies have tested and proven their solutions here, this can be made available globally to help similar climates around the world. The pace of agricultural development in Abu Dhabi has accelerated exponentially in recent years. Today, there are over 24,000 farmers in Abu Dhabi using the availability of year-round sunlight to fulfill the potential of desert agriculture seen by the late Sheikh Zayed. We work with innovators such as our hosts, AeroFarm, Pure Harvest, Fresh to Home, NanoRacks, Madar Farms, RNZ, RDI, I can keep going. Over 50% of our portfolio within Adio focuses on the ag tech space. So they provide a platform for us to conduct incredible R&D and produce a huge variety of crops of the highest quality with the list growing every year. Abu Dhabi's Actec story continues to write incredible new chapters. Just yesterday, AeroFarms AGX was unveiled to the world, 54,000 square feet. It's the largest indoor vertical farm of its kind on the planet, and its R&D will advance sustainable controlled environmental agriculture. Abu Dhabi's Actec ambition are expanding beyond our planet through Star Lab Oasis. And I've seen Alan, our CEO, sitting in the crowd somewhere. Alan, do you mind standing up? There you go. It's, it's a hugely ambitious project right? that uses the harsh environment of space to develop commercially viable Actec products and technologies. So they're literally flying to space to test and understand how the arid climate of space and the technologies to de develop there can then be applied back here home on Earth. Projects like AeroFarm, AGX, Starlab Oasis, and many, many others are advancing Actec solutions for global importance. Actec is an incredibly exciting sector of the Abu Dhabi's economy but we are still at the early stages of our story and we want to do so much more. Adio is here to support and collaborate with Actec pioneers from around the world. We believe the Emirates' unique advantages, combined with our support for innovation, will enable the next generation of globally important desert and arid climate agricultural solutions to be delivered here in the UAE's capital. If you want to be a part of our AgTech story, speak to the Audio team.
I'm going to ask the audio team that's are in the crowd to please stand up so you can identify yourselves. So we offer access to the Emirates innovation ecosystem, public land bank and major infrastructure projects, as well as a range of growth enabling support to set up, scale and succeed with Abu Dhabi. And with 2023 being the year of sustainability, there has never been a better time to grow here in the capital. Thank you for your time today. Enjoy the rest of the summit. I wanted to explain why Aero Farms is in Abu Dhabi. And because it, it's not necessarily intuitive, a company that started off in New Jersey, that's growing farms in the US comes here. And it starts for me with Jeffrey Moore. For those who don't know, and I'm a, you don't know, I'm a serial entrepreneur. My last company was Nanotech. I've been involved in different companies. The, uh, Jeffrey Moore is, uh, was a mentor and um, he's it, for, uh, is a product of Silicon Valley venture capital. He wrote a book called Crossing the Chasm that's like the Bible for um, that, that, like the startup world. And the main point of Crossing the Chasm is how do you go from early stage adopters to mainstream adopters? And what one looks for is partners or places or area markets where there's high pain or high political will. So a strong willingness to adopt new technology. And thank you, Abdullah. And when we partnered with Audio, there was clear political will based off the area in Abu Dhabi in the MENA region where there's pain. And what I mean by pain is there's not a lot of arable land and there's not a lot of fresh water. And there's people every, all over the world want to de-risk food security. So how do you be in a food safe environment? So that's a great partnership. In ways, various ways, the business model is stronger here than it is in the US. So here we have high political will people that want to work with us very actively and not only work with us to provide food, but work with us to provide an ecosystem of innovation. As an entrepreneur, as an innovator, we want to go where people are bold, where there's a boldness to try new things. And for those here in person, just look around at the architecture, look at the buildings, they're magnificent. And there's that boldness here in Abu Dhabi. And that is music to an entrepreneur, to an innovator's ears to partner with that early stage adopters. So here we have early stage adopters and partners that are very excited about us being here and thinking very holistically about adding value to the industry. So you heard Abdullah talk about some of the partnerships and he, there's a lot of pride in how these partners are adding value, not just to Abu Dhabi, but to the greater region, the greater world. And that's very much the spirit of what we found in partnerships with Audio and the acceptance in the region. So for those not here, I encourage you to lean in. It's an exciting place to innovate. It's a rapidly changing environment. I'm tremendously excited and honored to be part of that change. And that's how we move faster together. And again, we need bold, rapid change. So thank you, uh, people of Abu Dhabi, people of the UAE for accepting us in the region. Audio, your partnership. And with that, let me turn it over to Becky Anderson and the rest of a great program. Thank you. <laughs> 